Right guys, what we're going to talk about now is uh, putting the harness on, okay? The first thing we look at, okay, is the rear dorsal plate. Right, this is this hardened plastic area here. And attached to that is the actual metal bearing. Okay, this is what we actually attach our intermediate attachment to, i.e. our inertia reel or our restraint equipment, okay? The second thing you'll notice about our harness is, is that it's elasticated. It's elasticated purely for comfort, guys, okay? So, what we do, we've got the shoulder straps and then we all just throw it on like a coat. Making sure the rear dorsal plate is in the centre of the back. Okay, next thing you'll notice is the chest strap. What you to note in this, guys, is this is non-load bearing. This is there to keep the shoulders on and to keep the dorsal plate nice and tight to your back. Doesn't matter which way around we do these up, we can either do the chest strap up first, or the leg strap, or vice versa. So, I'm going to do the chest strap up. It goes in the rear loop, pull it tight, through the front loop, okay, and then we tighten it, so it's nice and comfortable, yet nice and tight. The next thing we do, guys, is we reach between the legs, okay, to pull up our leg straps. Pull the leg straps up through the groin and we put the male into the female of the metal buckles. And obviously we do it on the inside as well. Now the next thing we do guys is probably the most important thing that we have to remember when we're in a harness, okay? We need to tighten the leg straps. We tighten it so it's around two fingers tension. Tighten it like this. Once we've tightened it, guys, like I say, two fingers tension, which means you've got two fingers, put it between the harness and your leg, okay, that is now sufficiently tight. The next thing we need to do, guys, is lock the harness. The first top black slider slides up. Underneath the metal buckles, the harness is now locked. Right guys, the last thing we need to do is with the bottom black slider, is slide it down to keep all the spare end of the harness where you've tightened it nice and neatly and out of the way. Right guys, the way I'm wearing my harness right now, Okay, it should be familiar to you all. Because 99.7 of you workers out there wear your harness is the way I'm wearing mine. I.e., as loose as possible for comfort. Now, wearing your harness like this, guys, it will offer you no protection whatsoever. When we fall, we can fall up to 22 kilonewtons of dynamic energy. That's 2.2 tons. The way a harness is designed, all the energy goes into the back and it gets dissipated around the harness and it ends up in the groin area. So what am I saying there? Well, if I was to fall up to 22 kilonewtons, my harness will ride up straight into my groin area like this. Now, we're all men, while there may be some females out there, I'm quite attached to what my harness is attacking right now. It's called severe testicular trauma, but it hasn't finished there. Okay, the harness end right up to the crack of my arse, like this. Basically what happens there is it tears your arse cheeks apart. Okay, it's called severe rectal damage. Now, the chap that you've just seen there is very unfortunate, okay. His guts have fell out the bottom of his arse. Now, this is probably the worst injury can imagine. It takes three weeks for it to start to heal. Okay? It needs stitching. Every time that you go to the toilet, okay, and you have bowel movement, the stitches tear. And it's that painful that you're gonna have to go to hospital to get the stitches redone and have your bum wiped by a nurse. Pretty embarrassing. But it still hasn't finished guys. Like I said, it doesn't finish until it hits bone. Attached to the bottom of your coccyx is your spine. And basically we have a, an impact cushion injury 
on the bottom of your spine, which will shatter your discs in, in your back area. Okay? And then if you're totally unlucky, your spleen will just basically shoot out the side of your body. As you can see now guys, very, very painful. Now, notice the two black sliders on the harness. Okay? These are there for a purpose guys. It's there to lock the harness. Now, if you don't lock the harness, when we fall up to 22 kilonewtons, we fall and all that happens is the harness rides up, rides up like so, but all that's keeping you from falling out is this area here called the bar tack. That rips and basically the harness slides through the metal buckles, it comes out and you will fall out the bottom of your harness guys. So we tighten it and we lock the harness. Now then guys, since your lucky day, when you've fallen, the bar tack holds. But the harness elongates that much that you actually fall out the side of the harness. And this has been proven in testing. Not strictly true with these harnesses, because we've fitted a lateral support strap just here. If any of you guys are over 15 stone, you need to make sure that your harness is rated to 21.5 stone. Now that's a bit of a shocker. Because I think the average work on building sites these days is around 14 and a half and 15 stone. Now that's naked out of the shower. Imagine the weight that you are with your work boots, your PPE and all your tools on. That's going to take you over 15 stone. So guys, you need to remember 21.5 stone. 